Hello, my name is Lauren Burkeen, and today I will be talking about EMGs, which are also known as electromyographies. An EMG is a diagnostic procedure that is used to assess the health of muscles and the nerves and motor neurons that control them. By measuring the electrical activity produced by muscles, an EMG can help diagnose or rule out a variety of neuromuscular disorders. The procedure is useful in identifying nerve dysfunction, muscle dysfunction, as well as nerve to muscle signal issues. The first step in performing an EMG is to identify the specific muscle or group of muscles to be assessed. This is typically done by examining the muscle and selecting the area that is most relevant for the patient's symptoms or condition. Once the muscle is located, the skin around the electrode placement area is thoroughly cleared. cleaned. <clears throat> this step is critical and as it ensures better contact between the skin and electrode, which is necessary for recording accurate electrical signals. Dead skin, lotion, oils, or other residue on the skin can cause these interferences with the signal, leading to a weaker reading. After the skin is cleaned, the electrode is positioned either on the surface of the skin or into the muscle tissue, depending on which method is used. In order to get the most accurate signal from a specific muscle, the electrode should be, should be placed along the midline of the muscle tissue, not towards the outer tissue. At this point, the patient is asked to either contract or relax the muscle in order to collect data. During the muscle contraction, the motor neurons send electrical signals to the muscle fiber, which causes them to contract. The electrode detects and records this electrical activity generated by the contraction. The resulting signals of the EMG display the pattern and intensity of muscle activity. A healthy muscle at rest should not produce any electrical activity. There should be no signal reflecting no ongoing muscle activity. If there is electrical activity when the muscle is at rest, it is considered abnormal and may indicate dysfunction. Spontaneous EMG is a diagnostic technique used to monitor a muscle at rest without any external stimulation, such as voluntary muscle contraction or nerve root stimulation. By recording the muscle's natural electrical activity, Spontaneous EMG allows clinicians to identify abnormal activity that could indicate neuromuscular dysfunction. In this method, subdermal needles are inserted into the muscle to detect electrical signals. These needles record the electrical activity produced by the muscle fibers, even when the muscle is not actively contracting. The absence of external stimulation helps to isolate and identify any abnormal signals within the muscle at rest. Abnormal electrical activity observed during the spontaneous EMG can take several forms, including spikes, bursts, trains, and neurotonic discharges. This shows what these different abnormalities can look like on an EMG. Spikes are short, sharp, high amplitude bursts of electrical activity. Spikes can occur during, due to the touching or manipulation of the nerve. There are four different types seen here. The first is monophasic. This is one spike that only goes in one direction. Biphasic is another type that has two phases, one going up, one going down. Triphasic has three phases. Polyphasic has four phases or more. <clears throat> Bursts are a series of rapid repetitive discharges of electrical activity that occur in a sequence. They are a group of multiple spikes together. Bursts can be triggered by mechanical irritation of the nerve, for instance, if the nerve is accidentally bumped or touched during the procedure. Trains are long sustained sequences of repetitive electrical activity, often seen in response to physical stress stress such as stretching, overheating, or cold irrigation of the muscle. A train refers to repetitive high-frequency bursts of electrical activity that can range from 60 to 200 spikes per millisecond. B train refers to the single, to single spikes or bursts that have a less regular frequency than A train. These spikes normally occur less than six times per millisecond. 
Lastly, C-train refers to continuous and irregular frequency patterns. Triggered EMG involve the use of electrical stimulation to assess nerve and muscle activity. Unlike spontaneous EMG, which records natural activity at rest, triggered EMG uses controlled stimulation to evaluate the response of the muscle and nerve to an electrical current. The stimulation is typically delivered through a nerve, where an electrical current passes through a needle or an electrode placed near a specific target, such as near a pedicle screw in, a spinal, in spinal surgery. <clears throat> the muscle's response to the stimulation is then recorded by an electrode which is inserted into the muscle. The goal of triggered EMG is to monitor the nerve response to ensure that the position of the screw is correct relative to the nerve. This is crucial during surgeries to help determine if the screw is too close to, too far from, or in the correct position relative to the nerve. This technique is also important for patient safety as it helps prevent nerve damage or discomfort and ensures that the screw placement is accurate. Different types of stimulation probes can be used in triggered EMGs to offer various ranges of current fields, sensitivity, and specificity. Monopolar is one type of stimulation probe that has a large current field, it's highly sensitive, and has low specificity. Bipolar probe has small current field, it's more specific and less sensitive. The tripolar probe has the smallest current field. An EMG is a very valuable diagnostic tool for identifying diseases and injuries that affect muscles and motor nerves. It helps diagnose conditions related to peripheral nerves, such as conditions like carpal tunnel and nerve compression. It also helps um, diagnose conditions related to nerve roots near the spinal cord, such as pinched nerve or sciatica. Muscle disorders such as muscle dy dystrophy, um, connections between muscles and nerves such as myasthenia gravis, um, as well as motor neurons in the brain or spinal cord um, such as ALS. EMG is a widely used clinical setting. Sorry, EMG is widely used in clinical setting to help diagnose these conditions, providing essential information about nerve and muscle function. Here are my sources and thank you for watching.